Welcome to podcasts recorded live at the Center for Spiritual Living in Portland, Oregon. We have many programs, classes, and workshops developed just for our online audience. To find out more, go to our website at cslportland.org and look under the online tab. Our mission is to open hearts, ignite minds, and make a difference. If you'd like to support our center and its video podcasts, you can donate online at cslportland.org slash donate. Allow us to become part of your extended spiritual community. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are most welcome at the Center for Spiritual Living. As Catherine mentioned, today is the first day of spring, and for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere, that means the sun is heading towards the north, which means that we're getting more light every day. And is anyone seeing a similar coincidence as we explore what's in the way is the way, and we're looking at bringing light to the darkness? Anyone else seeing a coincidence? We are climbing. Jacob's Ladder and every rung is taking us higher and higher. Thank you, Ellen. What else is interesting about our exploration of what's in the way is the way is that the very core message of this book is life is set up to bring up what has been bound up so it can open up to be freed up. So just as Ellen said, so we can show up for life. Are we ready to show up for life? Yeah. All right. All right. So today we're exploring four tools for awakening so that we can show up for life. And these four tools are asking for help from the intelligence of life. That means remembering oneness, and it goes all the way back to week three of our exploration where we looked at you are not alone. Second, cultivating curiosity, remembering, accepting attention. No criticism, no judgment, accepting attention. Changing our relationship with discomfort. And here we're looking at remembering life is in perpetual motion. We keep climbing that ladder one step higher, 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 and that everything passes. So this too, whatever it is in our life, shall pass. And finally, accessing the power of our heart center. Remembering life is love. It is for us and we can trust it. So are we ready to explore our four tools of awakening? Yes? Yes? All right, let's go. Asking for help from infinite intelligence of life, meaning remembering oneness. So often we hear individuals may come to us and say, well, what do you think about that? Or what do you think I should do? Or uh, do you think that this relationship looks right for me? We ask an outside source. And what this awakening tool is reminding us is that there isn't anything out here that has access to the infinite possibilities that are available to us when we choose to go within. We must go within if we really want to access infinite possibilities. Uh, Probably about four decades ago, I was listening to a motivational series by Anthony Robbins, and he put it very succinctly. He said, if you want better answers, you must ask better questions. So the way that we access this infinite intelligence is we ask better questions. And why is this so? When we ask a question, 
we are setting something into motion. Science of Mind also teaches the creative process, and it tells us that the universal law receives the direct impress of our thought and acts upon it, bringing it into form. And it acts upon it and brings an answer in a personal way. You will know that this answer is directly for you because it has meaning to you. It might be your favorite number. It might be the, your favorite color. It might be suddenly you're driving down the freeway and you see a billboard or you hear something on the radio and you're like, oh! and you know. That's the infinite intelligence responding to us in a personal way. Now, the asking of the question is very important. Because if we want better answers, we need to ask better questions. Which means if I ask the question, why can't I? What do you think that infinite intelligence is going to bring to me? It is going to bring to me infinite number of reasons why I cannot do something. Because it always says yes. We are the beloved. And it wants to support us. So if I say, why can't I? It searches and it says, well, here's why you can't. Here's why you can't. Here's why you can't. Here's why you can't. Can. So if we want better answers, we have to ask better questions. So what about asking for the highest and best good of myself and all others? In what way can I? Or what is the right next step? Do you see the difference? Suddenly, we are tapping into an infinite variety of resources that were not available to us when we said, why can't I? We are opening up to an intelligence that is, as Catherine said, the architect and the architecture of the cosmos and beyond. Now, I'd rather have that bring in some guidance than asking a friend who may or may not even have the same level of understanding that I have. It doesn't matter where we are. It means that the infinite intelligence is available to us. And scripture reinforces it. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, ask. Remember, it says ask, seek, knock. When we ask, the answer is always provided, always. We can be assured. So when we're asking a higher order question, I like to call it a higher order question or a better question to get a better answer, we are literally changing our perspective and that shift in our perspective is a movement in the mind of God. And it shifts from limitation and constriction to expansion, openness, and infinite possibility. So instead of saying uh, from the perspective of why me, we shift our perspective to blessed me and the blessings pour in from I never have enough to I have more than enough. We sing that every Sunday, more than enough. When we shift our mind, that is a shift in the mind of God. It is a movement in the mind of God, and we are opening up to more resources. And when we shift from why can't I to in what ways can I, once again, we are accessing that infinite intelligence of life. Now, you can apply this to anything. You can go to the grocery store, and if you pick up something, you can literally ask, for, in all things considered and for my highest and best good, is this the right food for my body? You will get an answer. I know I've shared the story of how I found this spiritual center when I moved here. I didn't know anyone. I didn't have a job. And this was 12 years ago. 
and I literally printed out three sheets of paper for three different spiritual centers, and I asked, with all things considered and for my highest and best good, is this the right center for me? Now, I like to use a pendulum. Not everybody does. But all I can say is my pendulum went apeshit over the Portland Center for Spiritual Living. <laughs> I mean, it just went crazy. It didn't move on the other two. Did not even move. But it moved a yes. And I got a personal response when I walked in the door because I was asking for a sign. Does anyone else ask for a sign? So anyway, know that because, just as Catherine mentioned in her prayer, there is only one power, one presence, one infinite intelligence, one, 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 present here. That intelligence is available to us at any time, any place, any situation. It sits quietly and waits for us to ask. So be brave. One of the tools for awakening is to dare to ask for help from the infinite intelligence of life. And what happens is it does bring up what has been bound up in order to um, open up so it can be freed up so we can show up for life. All right, cultivating curiosity. How many of us like to garden? I'm real passionate about flowers. Um, when uh, I was living in North Carolina and my parents lived about two miles down the road, my father was an avid master garden vegetable gardener. And he thought I was totally wasting my time growing flowers. He would say, why are you growing those flowers? You can't eat them. I said, I'll tell you what, Dad. You cultivate the vegetables. I'll cultivate the flowers. One is nutrition for the body. The other is nutrition for the soul. And I'll exchange my flowers for some of your vegetables, and you exchange some of your vegetables for some of my flowers, and we'll have a great deal. We'll have soul and body covered. Well, anyway, I bring up the whole cultivating thing because spring always reminds me of um, master gardeners or farmers or getting out in the soil, and they begin to cultivate it. Think of rototilling and turning and digging and we're just literally turning over the soil and that newness comes up we're composting and you'd love to get your hands in it does anyone else like to dig in the dirt okay yeah there was a time when i didn't like that but i just really love it and the word curiosity means a strong desire to know so to cultivate is to turn over to explore, to dig deeper in that earth that is our life. And when we have a curiosity, we have a deep desire to know. And why is it important? When we meet life with curiosity, we tend to give up that desire to fix, control, deny, or repress that which is painful. And so when we're willing to allow that to be a part of our life, we have a richer soil. And I happen to um, really like this quote from Thich Nhat Hanh, Han, a beloved Buddhist monk, made his transition in January. He's also known as the father of mindfulness. And he eloquently emphasizes the gift of the light and shadow aspects of our life. He says the fear, anger, and suffering in us are like useful compost. We must not try to throw them out the window. They are quite necessary in order for flowers like compassion, joy, and happiness to bloom in us. This is the basis of all spiritual practice. 
Without it, we will continue to suffer. We will continue to believe that we have to get rid of these negative states in order to be happy. And on the contrary, it is very important that we accept them. So when you think of rich soil, we think of the compost. I remember 50-pound bags of black cow to create rich soil, cultivating it, making it open and nurturing for what I wanted to plant. Well, so too the fear, the pain, the anger, the doubt. It's a part of who we are. So we start where we are. We use what we have and we do what we can. And in cultivating with curiosity, we are awakening the richness of all of our life experiences and releasing that need to resist, control, deny, or run away from them. We are opening up to be freed up so we can show up for life. All right, so now we move to our third awakening, and that is changing our relationship with discomfort. And we all sort of go, mmm. Of course, can sort of start feeling the body constrict, like, no, I'm not so sure about that. It's really important that remember that life is in constant motion, constant motion. As much as we want something to stay the same when life is in a great state, this microphone is, uh, we want it to stay the same, we try to keep it the same, or when it's uncomfortable, we want to change it. Life has a rhythm of its own, and it's always, always, always in motion. So we can rest assured that no matter what we are facing, this too shall pass. And it's kind of like yesterday I was out walking. I've shared with you before that every day I walk because I'm in this beautiful downtown area of Vancouver, and there's the riverfront and Fort Vancouver and all kinds of walking trails. And when I left to go on my walk yesterday, when I started, the sun was shining, it was breezy, it was beautiful. I'm admiring all the blossoms and the daffodils are just gorgeous. All the people and the dogs and the kids at the farmer's market, there was just life springing everywhere. Walked down to Fort Vancouver, all of a sudden the clouds kind of swept in. The next thing you know, it started to drizzle. The next thing you know, it was kind of a pelting rain. And I just kept walking, put my hood up, kept walking, and then pretty soon, magic. The sun was out again. And I walked another couple miles in the sun. Well, that's how life is for us, too. We may have those dark moments. We may have those shadow moments. Life is always moving. And so our past, our painful experiences, they want to be heard. They need our attention. They want us to respond with curiosity. They want us to remember that whatever is hidden must be revealed in order to be healed. That was the quote from one of my spiritual teachers about two decades ago. And she said, Marilyn, whatever is hidden must be revealed in order to be healed. And our author, Mary O'Malley, puts it the way that Ellen put in her song this morning, and that is that life is set up to bring up what has been bound up so it can open up to be freed up so we can what? show up for life. Well, I want us to have some fun with this. And so what I'm asking us to do is every time we come with the, we're going to say a mantra. I'm going to say it, then you're going to repeat it. And every time we come up with the word up, I want you to put your arms in the air as high as you can. And just remember, no new pain. So that means if it's painful, you just do what you can. All right? So life is set up. Yeah, you're going to repeat. So I'm going to say it and do it, and then you're going to repeat, okay? Call and response. 
<laughs> Thank you, LaRonda. You see it. All right. Life is set up, Life is set up. to bring up what has been bound up so it can open up to be freed up so we can show up for life. Well, we can do that too, yeah. All right, let's see if we can accelerate that. Life is set up to bring up what has been bound up so it can open up to be freed up so we can show up for our life. Oh, let's give ourselves a hand. Great job. And when we do that, we stop resisting our painful experiences, and that takes so much of our creative energy. And once again, the perpetual motion of life within us begins to flow through our body, and we can feel that aliveness as it returns to a space of joy and love and happiness and expansiveness. So we're going to do what? Life is set up to bring up what has been bound up so it can open up to be freed up so we can show up for life. Yes. Awesome. All right. And now let's bring in our heart center. We must remember that life is love. Once again, Catherine in her prayer this morning talked about one presence. That one presence is love. In Science of Mind, we teach that love is the eternal givingness of spirit. It gives of itself to itself in the form of its creation. That means the very essence of who we are is love. And so when we choose to release the restriction. We open up pathways for love to express. Now, there was a phrase in the book. It said, the heart knows how to embrace life rather than resist. Well, I have to say I sat up like, whoa, because we remember our word ministry. For those of you who are not familiar with it, in November, Words are available for purchase. Well, I received two this year. One was no, and one was embrace. Have them in two different altars in my apartment. I read this book, and I was like, the heart knows how to embrace life rather than resist. And I went, Marilyn, you need to pay attention to your heart center. You need to pay attention to love is life. And so what does the heart know? It knows acceptance, it knows spaciousness, it knows expansion, and it knows listening. It knows that life is love. It knows that life is for us. It is always saying yes, and our heart center knows we can trust it. Now, because of time, I'm going to briefly give a quote by Ernest Holmes rather than exploring this topic from the book. Ernest Holmes, founder of Religious Science, states it this way in 365 Science of Mind. He said, God is the giver of all things by means of love. Again, remember, love is the eternal giving us. All the love there is is right here, right now, with me. I now cease all self-opposition. Don't you love that? I now cease all self-opposition. I hear only the voice of love speaking to me. I hear the words of wisdom guiding and inspiring me. And when I listen, there is a response from something greater than myself. It is the mysterious energy of love, the active principle of unity, which brings us all the way back to our very first awakening tool, the principle of oneness, partnering with the intelligence of life, cultivating curiosity, changing our relationship with discomfort, and accessing the power of our heart center. So indeed, love which is life, or life, 
which is love, however you want to, is set up to bring up what has been bound up so it can be freed up. It can be opened up in order to be freed up so we can do what? Show up for life. Let us pray. Oh, as we breathe in, we open our hearts, we open our minds to love. Love is that one presence. Love is the substance of all that is. And in this space and in this time, recognizing that each of us is of this substance, each of us is an individualized expression of life and of love. And in this now moment, I claim and affirm that there is a willingness to open heart and mind to access that infinite intelligence, to be curious about what is, to allow the expansion of energy, and to remember that all the love there is is right here, right now, and available to each of us. For in the ask, there is always a personal response. There is always an opening to that infinite possibility that exists in the vast infiniteness of the one mind. And so I am knowing that each person is mighty in its creative process. Each person is magnificent in its essence. And each person is an expression of love. And so I am so grateful for this truth. God is all there is, expressing right here, right now, as love. I let it be. And together we say, and so it is. Hmm. Thank you for being here today. Getting ready to show up. If you happen to be in the Portland, Oregon area, we'd love to have you visit in person. The Portland Center for Spiritual Living is located at 6211 Northeast Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. We have inspirational services at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. every Sunday. We also have many programs, classes, and workshops developed just for our online audience. To find out more, go to our website at cslportland.org and look under the Online tab. We have a variety of content dedicated specifically for our online listeners. Our mission is to open hearts, ignite minds, and make a difference. If you'd like to support our center, you can donate online at cslportland.org slash donate. Our website is also the place to learn more about what's going on at the center or to contact us. Allow us to become part of your extended spiritual community. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are most welcome at the Center for Spiritual Living.